The coastal landscape of Britain is shrouded in eerie mystery. Sea mists, tempestuous waters, dramatic scenery and unearthly sounds lend themselves to many a tale that send a shiver down the spine. There can't be many coastal towns or fishing villages that don't have their fair share of malevolent spirits, drowned bells or mysterious sounds within their folklore. Today we're going to be taking a look at the area around Seaton Delible in Northumberland. Seaton Delible Hall is a Grade 1 listed country house in Northumberland, England. It is near the coast just north of Newcastle upon Tyne, located between Seaton Sluice and Seaton Delible. Since completion of the house in 1728, it has had an unfortunate history. Neither architect nor patron lived to see its completion. It then passed through a succession of heirs, being lived in only intermittently. Most damaging of all, in 1822, the central block was gutted by fire, although modern restoration work is taking place. During the Second World War, the hall was used to house German prisoners of war who worked as labourers on neighbouring farms. As with many big old houses, Seaton Delaval Hall is alleged to have a ghost. There is a first floor window on the north front of Seaton Delaval where, so it would seem, from one particular part of the forecourt, a white clad figure is standing. This, according to legend, is the White Lady, a girl who fell in love with the Delaval heir and died of a broken heart because the marriage was forbidden. There's something eerily fascinating about abandoned places, like melancholy reminders of previous eras with seemingly little purpose in our modern world. Yet they linger on regardless, still part of our environment and steeped in history. It's not difficult to see how over time, myths arise and superstitions can take hold. One quarter of a mile to the southeast of Seaton Delaval Hall lies Delaval Mausoleum, a substantial classical mausoleum with the dome set on a square drum rising in the centre. This mausoleum was built by Sir John Hussey Delaval in 1775 after his son died as a result of being kicked in a vital organ by a laundry maid to whom he was paying addresses. It is said never to have been used for burial because the bishop would not bless it. There are many local legends surrounding the mausoleum. It is not open to the public and getting there is quite difficult as it's far from the beaten track. There is a crypt underneath the mausoleum which is designed to hold bodies. This has now been sealed off by a metal grate as there are many local stories of youngsters heading into the crypt at night and seeing pentagrams on the walls and many other strange occurrences, although this could be local superstition. A local legend says that the mausoleum is also haunted, likely by the same entity which haunts the hall. The woman in grey is also reported to lurk around the mausoleum. A short drive from Seaton Delaval Hall and the mausoleum in Seaton Sluice is the Delaval Arms, a mid 18th century grade two listed inn. This building stands in the approximate location of a former inn, the Three Horseshoes Coaching House, which is coming up in our next story. Immediately outside the Delaval Arms is the Blue Winestone. This stone once marked the centre of the village of Hartley. It is a Saxon boundary stone. At the time of the Black Death in the 14th century, people believed that they would become immune from the plague if they touched the stone. It became a symbol of good fortune and by tradition, you had to kiss the stone to become a citizen of Hartley. Casting our view seaward from the Delaval Arms, we can look over the coast 
towards Whitley Bay's St. Mary's Island. This was originally called Bates Island. The island is opposite Curry's Point on the mainland and is the central focus of our next local story. The term gibbeting refers to a gallows-like structure on which the dead or dying bodies of criminals were hung in order to deter other potential criminals. Whilst this practice ended in England in 1834, it was commonplace up until then, and this is one such local example. On the 4th of September, 1739, Michael Curry was hung for the murder of Robert Shevel. The murder was committed in one of the rooms of the Three Horseshoes Inn, Hartley, of which Shevel was the landlord. Before his execution, Curry delivered a written confession to the chaplain, in which he admitted himself guilty of the murder, but denied that Shevel's wife had urged him to do it. Curry was taken to the West Gate in Newcastle and executed. His body was taken from the place of execution direct to Hartley and hung in chains at a point on the coast forever after known as Curry's Point. In England, many laws against witchcraft were repealed in 1736. However, witch hunting still went on. In 1863, an alleged witch was drowned in a pond in Essex. And in 1945, the body of an elderly farm labourer was found. He had been murdered. He was suspected to be a wizard. The murder remained unsolved. It seems that belief in witchcraft has not entirely died out. Seton Sluice lies half a mile from the village of Hartley and was once part of it, being called Hartley Pans because of the salt pans that were used to make salt there from as far back as 1236. The immediate area is dripping with macabre folklore regarding the Delaville family, who had a reputation for madness, wild parties and witch burning. According to country folklore, the blue stone we talked about earlier was once known as the Witch's Obelisk. It had a variation of an old common theme which said that if you were to run around it seven times without stopping, a witch would appear. According to local legend, one day Lord Delaville forced his way into Walls End Church to find a bunch of old hags involved in a ceremony involving a naked young girl lying on a table and some knives. They fled, but Delaville managed to capture one, tie her up and transport her to Seton Delaville. She was tried and found guilty of witchcraft. Her punishment was to be burnt alive on Seton Sluice Beach. Local legend which in our enlightened times isn't to be taken at face value, says the witch requested to have the use of two new wooden dishes, which were then procured from Seton Sluice. She was then tied to her stake on the beach, the dishes given to her, and fire was applied. As the smoke arose around her, she placed a foot in each of the utensils, muttered a spell, cleared herself from the fastenings at the stake and soared away. But when she had risen to a considerable height, the spell lost its magic and she fell to earth because the person who procured the dishes had washed them in clean water. Without affording her another chance to escape, the beholders conveyed her back to the pile where she perished amidst its flames. Someone once said the secret to a good tall tale is exaggeration, and I think that's true. However, it's also worth bearing in mind that behind every local law or superstition or legend is often the semblance of truth, which is why the story is endured. I hope you enjoyed delving into the dark history of Seton Delaval and the surrounding areas today. Thanks for watching. 
and see you in the next one.